So in this video we're going to talk about concavity and kind of what that means and how to find it and also talk about um, using the second derivative chart to find when it's concave up, when it's concave down, and our points of inflection. So this discovery you can go through it on your own or you can work through it with me. It would be best if you try it on your own and if you didn't have any had questions then you watch this video. So I would suggest actually stopping this, going through at least the discovery portion if you're in my BC Calc class, and then if you had questions on it, come back and watch the video. But we'll run this together as well. So the idea with concavity is you really want to think about like how is it holding water. So you think of it like a cup. So this is concave upwards because if I was going to like put a little man in the cave, it's one of the ways I remember it, you would put him on this side. So if you think of it like as a cave, here he is inside the cave. If it would be down here, here he is inside the cave, this would be concave down. It's down below it. So this is the idea of concave up, this is the idea of concave down. Now when we look at a graph that's a little bit more complicated, such as this one, I would consider this first half to be concave down and the second half here to be concave up. So it's concave up on what intervals? Well, looks like it. We're just eyeballing it. I would say it's concave up from zero to infinity. Now I'm not going to include zero just in the way that you don't generally include the endpoints in increasing and decreasing. At this point, if this is the point where the concavity changes, it actually kind of goes flat. If you think about a line, a line has no concavity one way or the other. You can it just doesn't. So at this point right here, right before it changes, even just for an instant, it's a flat line. So I'm not counting it on the interval. Especially because then it's concave down from negative infinity to zero. I don't really want to count zero on one side, not the other, and I don't want to count it on both as well. So that's the idea. On um, what x values does the concavity change? Well, it changed right at x equals zero. Now, how tall this is above and below the graph does not matter. If this graph did this, it still would change concavity in the middle, even if it was down here. So the y value really is not all that important here. That's a terrible graph, sorry. <laughs> okay, so what are we looking for down here? We're looking for y prime. Well, y prime is going to be, well, the derivative. 3x squared minus 4x. Oh, 4, sorry. And then when you want to do y double prime in the next portion, let's go up here for a second. I'm just going to rewrite the equation so I can see it. So our equation here is y equals x cubed minus 4x. So we have our y prime again to be 3x squared minus 4. y double prime, the second derivative, you're just going to take the derivative of your first derivative. So we end up with a 6x minus nothing. This question asks what's the importance of number 3's answer here. Now if you look up, number 3 was x equals 0. And the truth is, if I was to plug in 0 here, that would make my second derivative zero. So that's the point. The point where it changes the inflection happened to be where my second derivative was equal to zero. Okay. All right, now if I want to find the second derivative at negative 1, that's going to give me negative 6. If I want to have it at positive 1, that's going to give me positive 6. Now notice that negative 1 is in the place where it is concave down. And also my second derivative happens in, to be negative. Over here, the second derivative is supposed to be concave up, and or the function was supposed to be concave up from 0 to infinity, right? And it happens to be that the second derivative is positive during that time. So we're trying to make this connection between the negative second derivative and concave down, and the positive second derivative and being concave up. All right, let's try this with the sine graph. Now we're only looking from negative 2 pi to 2 pi, so this graph keeps going forever. What is it concave up? Well, it looks like it's concave up here and here. So it looks like we've got negative pi to 0, and then also pi to 2 pi. Okay, at least that's what it looks like. And it's kind of came down from negative 2 pi to negative pi. In this range right here, so I'm like down the negative. And then over here, it's kind of came down. And then also from 0 to pi. All right, 
So what, what x values of the concavity change? Well, they seem to change here at negative pi, zero, pi. And I can't really talk about the endpoints because it's up, but there's no down on that side. I know it will be because it keeps going, but all I've got is zero and plus or minus pi. Or you could listen, negative pi, zero, and pi. But those are the values. All right, well, let's talk about the derivative, so cosine of x. And then the double derivative, negative sine of x. And again, you just do the derivative of your derivative, get your second derivative. What happens when you plug the answers to number 8 in here? So if I plug in 0, well, negative sine of 0 is 0. Negative sine of pi is 0. Negative sine of negative pi is 0. So the second derivative, my double prime, is equal to 0 for any of these values. So the point where the concavity is changing is where the second derivative happens to equal 0. Okay. Let me see what the next question is. Alright, so we got a little bit of a shift because I had to move the screen down here. If I want to plug in, I'd like to see everything here, negative pi over 2. i got to plug that into the second derivative. Now remember, let me see if I can't just do this. Oh, that was fantastic. I'm pretty proud of that little move right there. All right, so either way, we want to... I'm actually really impressed that that worked the way I was hoping it did. Anyway, so we want to plug this number into the second derivative and see what we get. So sine of negative pi over 2 would be negative 1, and we get negative negative 1 or a positive 1. And then if we plug in pi over 2, sine of pi over 2 is 1, and we have a negative out front, so we get a negative one. Now let's look at the original graph. So at negative pi over two, we're here and we're concave up. So our second derivative happens to be positive. If we look over here at positive pi over two, we are concave down and our second derivative happens to be negative. So again, if my second derivative is positive, we have to be concave up. If my second derivative is negative, we have to be concave down. And that's really what you're trying to get at. When things are concave up is when the second derivative is positive. So f double prime of x, if that is greater than zero, you're concave up. If f double prime of x is less than zero, you're concave down. 